In November 1963, President Diosdado Macapagal, with the First Lady and the five-man staff, visited the memorial of John F. Kennedy. From Manila, Macapagal and his retinue went to Honolulu on November 24 and from Honolulu flew to Washington. The original plan for Macapagal was to stay in the United States for four or five days. This was his first trip to the country during his term. He cancelled an earlier visit planned in June 1962 because of the disapproval by the American Congress of a bill filed in May 1962 appropriating $73 million for war damages in the Philippines. While this U.S. trip did not push through, Makapagal's trips to Spain, Italy, and Pakistan from June to July, which were planned in relation to it and which were planned in relation to U.S. interests in these countries, did. In August 1962, the same bill was reconsidered and signed into law by Kennedy. During his time in the United States, there were rumors that Makapagal would do a side trip to visit African countries. On December 1, these reports were confirmed. The trip was the first time any Philippine head of state visited the African continent. All the preparations were done within the time of Makapagal's visit to the U.S. As one account elaborates, and I quote, Washington officials encouraged the trip, probably because America is proud that the Philippines has something to show for its 17 years of independence. End of quote. This map reconstitutes the itinerary of Makapagal's trip to the Kennedy Memorial, then to Africa, and back to Manila. The trip was planned to travel from west to east, from Liberia to Nigeria to the Republic of Congo to Tanganyika to Malagasy to Zanzibar all of which had recently declared independence. Boarding a Pan American Airways jetliner, which has been christened Clipper Sampaguita, to give it the native touch, and that was also assigned a Filipina flight attendant named Shirley Hart, Makapagal set off to Liberia on December 5th and arrived on the 7th. Makapagal arrived in Tanganyika in time for the first anniversary of their independence on December 9. Zanzibar was originally in the itinerary and also achieved independence during Makapagal's tour, December 9, but was eventually bypassed because their airfield was too small. Nigeria and the Republic of Congo were bypassed in this itinerary since their head of states were also away on diplomatic visits, which highlights how impromptu Makapagal's trip was. Plans to visit Kenya also did not pan out, although the presidential aircraft passed by Nairobi before landing in Tanganyika. Although it would have been an apt gesture to visit Kenya on its eve of independence on December 12, 1963, Makapagal's group decided against it. Since Prince Philip, husband of Queen Elizabeth, would be there for the ceremonies as well, and such a visit could have only brought on complications on the ongoing negotiations on Saba. The last destination of the trip was Malagasy, present-day Madagascar, which in Wenceslao Vinzon's account of a Pan-Malayan ethnos that informed the formation of Mafilindo, forms part of, and I quote, a unified Malaysia extending from the northern extremity of the Malay Peninsula to the shores of New Guinea, from Madagascar to the Philippines and to the remotest islands of Polynesia, will be a powerful factor in the oceanic world, end of quote. After Makapagal's trip to Africa, Makapagal and his entourage flew to Bangkok to pay respects to Prime Minister Sarit Tanarat, who had died on the 8th. On December 16th, Makapagal reached Manila.